Hey, what's up everyone? So, um, yeah, with Meta's new Quest headset on the way, uh, should you still buy a Quest 2? Or maybe sell it if you already own one? Well, in today's video, I am going to tell you everything you need to know about the Quest Pro. Get ready. So, yes, this is the newest headset in the lineup of Meta's push for VR and now also AR to go mainstream. It's good to know that all the information I'm about to share came from sadly it's Bradley who claims to have spoken to a very reliable source who seems to know everything that goes on behind the scenes at Meta for quite a while now. So I would say take this with a slight slight grain of salt but on the other side this man has been right about a lot of things already so it could be that well 90% of this is in fact going to happen. So for a complete deep dive, check out his uh, website, sadlyinreality.com. Anyways, to come straight out of the gate, the Quest Pro is mainly aimed towards remote work. So we're talking businesses who want to expand on productivity within VR and AR for meetings, presentations, education, health, product design and training purposes with Horizon Workrooms being one of its leading social frameworks. Um, the Pro can be used by developers as a tool to build stuff for the future so that they are being ready for when this headset stack becomes the standard later down the road. Uh, that of course doesn't mean the Quest Pro isn't able to run the latest and greatest VR games. No, actually it, it does, but it's good to know that it's not a gaming focused headset. Hence the name Pro. For now, the Quest 2 will remain to be Meta's flagship for gamers, till the Quest 3 gets announced. If you really can't wait, no one is going to stop you, as the headset will be sold to everyone, from developers to, well, prosumers. Yeah, you ready for this? So, the Quest Pro will be a whopping 1500 in US dollars. This will get you the full kit, including the headset itself, motion controllers, a charging dock, cables and documentation. An additional uh, bundle will be sold for 300 bucks that only gives you the controllers and charging station. This is for people who want to continue using their Quest 2 but do want to upgrade to the new Pro controllers, confirming that they are indeed compatible with older hardware. But no news on the first Quest, although I'm not sure if anyone is still planning to, well, develop with that headset. Yeah, you will be able to pre-order the Quest Pro during Mark Zuckerberg's keynote at Meta Connect and is set to ship at the end of October. So that's quite fast. Wow. Uh, now, let's dive a little bit deeper into the specs. Uh, the Quest Pro doesn't look anything like the Quest 2. No, the front is overlaid with a dark tinted piece of plastic that houses cutting edge technology that not only lets you explore virtual reality, but also augmented reality, unlocking full color pass through to explore the real world from a whole new perspective. You get to pretty much mash up VR and AR together and creating mixed realities. Having experienced this myself, I can tell you that the first time you step into mixed uh, reality, it, it's truly magical and makes it hard to go back to Quest 2's warped black and white pass-through. If you haven't already, check out the video I did on the Lynx R1. It's absolutely next level and gives you a good idea of what the Quest Pro will be capable of. For your information, the Lynx is one of Meta's competitors that does similar things but is being made by a small startup from France who wants to create an open metaverse. Now let's go back to the Pro. Uh, to balance out the overall weight of the headset, the Pro's battery is located in the back, serving as a counterweight to increase comfort. Also, the Pro is going for a classic halo design that can be easily pulled over the head as it automatically stretches out thanks to its built-in spring loads. It even has an extra dial in the back to tighten it up in the neck area. This was first uh, spotted on a video where Mark Zuckerberg is wearing the supposedly Quest Pro, turning something that seems to be a knob or maybe he's playing DJ of the metaphors. I don't know, but hey, uh, the audio is coming out of the bottom part of the strap where improved speakers will handle the spatial audio. It's no problem to use a pair of headphones either with dual jacks being positioned next to each speaker, like you see here. 
Although, I do hope they finally start looking into making wireless work over a Bluetooth uh, signal with no delays. In terms of the microphone, we, we don't really know much, but uh, fingers crossed it sounds better than the current gen uh, Quest. On the front left side of the headset, you can plug in a USB-C cable to, for example, transfer files, connect it to the dev hub or to use the link feature. It can also serve as a secondary charging port, but since there is now a charging dock available, this is not going to be the main way to, uh, to do it anymore. What's nice is that in this box you will find a plastic clip as well for cable management that can be attached to the side of the strap. What's most surprising is that its sides are completely open. Uh, handy for when you want to make use of augmented reality, but not so much for virtual reality. I, I do expect it to come with a magnetic face cover that you can slide into the headset to completely block off the real world. So the light and everything that kind of, you know, ruins the immersion. The latest pictures we've seen do confirm this. Looking at the headset's uh, internals, the Quest will make use of the same Qualcomm Snapdragon XR2 chipset that also sits inside the Quest 2. Storage wise it's going to be a uh, 256 gigs, a nice sweet spot that gives uh, plenty of space to do whatever, but sadly a uh, no option to extend storage with an additional SD card slot. Uh, next to that it uses 12 gigabytes of uh, DDR5 uh, RAM. This is uh, double the size of what the Quest 2 has and a lot faster too. Definitely a welcoming addition. Talking about tracking, uh, in total the Quest Pro has 10 camera sensors. Combined, these take care of the hand tracking, inside out tracking, color pass through and face slash eye tracking. So to take the most interesting elements out, uh, the, the face tracking is being done by two cameras that are sitting right under the nose of the headset. These will track your mouth movements and maybe, maybe even your tongue. Yeah, uh, the eye tracking is happening by another two cameras. Those are uh, located inside the housing of the lenses. It will capture things from blinking to rolling your eyes. Uh, everything will pretty much uh, show. And last but not least, there is one more camera being used for your eyebrows sitting around the forehead, giving me major, major vision vibes. Now, all of this together will bundle its powers to create more expressive and lifelike VR interactions between people's avatars. According to Brad's uh, sources, this technology will be mainly used for Horizon Worlds, Horizon Home and Horizon Workrooms. Developers are free to implement it in their apps if they, if they want to. So, let's talk about the Quest Pro using uh, custom pancake lenses. They, they call them pancake lenses for a reason, as they are stacked on top of each other. I don't want to go too deep into this, but this uh, technique is basically being used to create a more compact headset. Just like the Quest 2, you adjust the IPD by grabbing the lenses with your uh, hands and move them to the left and right. This time it does offer a smoother transition, meaning you can be way more precise where you want your IPD to land, so no more three settings. Based on this information, I do find it surprising that it doesn't come with an auto IPD system or at least a slider, especially for the price you're paying, right? So I hope that in this case, Brad Source is wrong because if you still have to use your hands, then that would suck. What doesn't suck is the display because it features QLED panels of 2160 by 2160 per eye, counter rotated at 21 degrees to improve its vertical field of view. If we put this in perspective, the Quest 2 has a resolution of 1832 by 1920. That doesn't seem to be a big jump on paper, but do realize that when you are in mixed reality, this will give you 1.1 million more pixels, translating in a 32% sharper screen. Oh, pleasure for the eyes. A bunch of other details that are floating around is that uh, the Quest Pro goes for 90 hertz and um, well, it can be pushed to 120 through uh, software. It features Wi-Fi 6E and uses the same mobile app as the Quest 2 for setup. Yeah, so with that being said, that was everything headset. Let's move on to the Quest Pro controller, something that I just haven't heard many people talk about. So yeah, it's funny that they look quite similar to Quest 2's touch controllers with, 
well, a few major differences. L let me explain. The biggest uh, change is that it has no large tracking rings anymore. Instead, it has integrated IR cameras spread out on the casing that can track themselves without needing to see the headset. What seems to be upgraded as well are its built-in haptics that are now able to send out more detailed uh, vibrations. But sadly, the trade-off is going to be that it does make them a lot heavier and significantly larger in size. On top, it comes with uh, the same thumbstick and button combination with, weirdly enough, the Oculus logo still uh, showing. The big uh, green space you see serves as an extra touchpad area that a developer can use for possible bindings in the form of a button or potentially swiping, but this is still super mysterious. The bottom of the controller seems to include some kind of pressure sensor that can be used for drawing purposes. It's still unknown how this is going to work exactly, but you might be able to attach a stylus tip and draw on a whiteboard or to make 3D sketches in mixed reality. Horizon Workrooms has already been teasing this, so that explains why they got rid of the tracking ring, as you can then hold the controller backwards way more easily. Again, a sign that the controllers are made for productivity and not necessarily gaming. So I am curious how that's going to work out in the end, if you are going to play uh, some titles with it. Probably the most, well, controversial news is that they ditched the removable AA batteries. A nice segue into Quest Pro's charging dock. So this charging dock will allow you to charge everything at the same time. So these right here are for the controllers and the others are for the headset. So you can charge the Pro through its uh, nose and the controllers through the sides. A pretty exciting way, I would say, of juicing up the hardware. But how fast is it going to be able to do this? This is a question that will remain till launch. And what do you think? Is this a worthy upgrade over the Quest? Are you going to buy this? Do you find it too expensive or too cheap? I don't think that's the case at all with the current inflation. But there are so many options. You could say, hey, I buy the controllers and I'll stick with my Quest 2. Or maybe you're like, I'm just gonna wait for the Quest 3 because it makes more sense if you're a gamer. But as a developer, these are tools that you may want to get your hands on. So there is a lot to discuss. Let me know in the comments below. Um, slam that like button if you haven't already. And shout out to Brad for all this information. Check out his website. It's in the description below. With that being said, until next time. See you in the metaphors and bye bye for now. See you in the metaphors. The one that is owned by us all.